everyone. From Oraran Company Advocates, my name is Linda Nyahoro, an associate at the Corporate and Commercial Practice of the Farm. Welcome to our OCO Roundtable podcast series. We are thrilled to have you with us for another exciting episode where we'll be talking about electric mobility in Kenya. Joining me today are two esteemed guests who bring a wealth of knowledge and experience to today's conversation. Our first guest is Cindy Oraro. Hello, everyone. Cindy is a partner at the firm's commercial practice, specializing in energy, infrastructure, and projects. She has over 12 years' experience advising local and international clients on matters like renewable energy, ESG, immobility, corporate restructuring, mergers and acquisitions, and mining. Our second guest is Eli Obegi. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. Ellie is a senior associate in the dispute resolution and tax practices at the firm, and he specializes in tax, commercial dispute resolution, and regional trade. Now, without further ado, let's get into the topic of today. Over the years, Kenya has witnessed a surge in investment in the immobility sector, with the government implementing policies and initiatives aimed at promoting the adoption of electric vehicles. E-mobility is defined as the use of electric vehicles for transport as a cleaner and more efficient alternative to fossil fuel-powered vehicles. In this episode, we'll delve into the current state of transport and the benefits of e-mobility to the country, the policies and initiatives put in place by the government, the challenges hindering the widespread adoption of electric vehicles, and the recommendations to help in overcoming these obstacles. We'll begin with exploring what is the current state of transport and why is there a growing need for a, a cleaner and more efficient transport options such as e-mobility. And I'll post that question to Cindy to give us her thoughts on that. Well, e-mobility now plays a significant role in the transport sector in Kenya. Indeed, Kenya is one of the countries spearheading the adoption of e-mobility in Africa. But it is not alone. Other countries such as South Africa, Rwanda, Ethiopia, Uganda, Mauritius, and Zambia also have burgeoning e-mobility sectors. As the transport sector contributes significantly to carbon emissions, there is a pressing need to promote the adoption of electric vehicles. This need for immediate action arises from the fact that the country's transport sector primarily relies on fossil fuel-powered vehicles, which are a major contributor to environmental pollution, and therefore to Kenya's overall carbon footprint. Also, as Kenya's population and economy grow, so do concerns about global warming and the need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions as part of the global mission to address climate change. E-mobility therefore presents an attractive option that can help Kenya transition to a cleaner, healthier, and more sustainable future. Further, embracing e-mobility aligns with Kenya's commitment to international agreements like the Paris Agreement of 2015, which aims to combat the adverse effects of climate change. Uh, notably, Kenya has set ambitious targets to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions by 32% by the year 2030. Transitioning to cleaner modes of transport such as e-mobility is therefore a critical step towards achieving this target. Moreover, Kenya's importation of cars from Japan presents another layer of influence. Countries like Japan have committed to transitioning to zero emission vehicles by the year 2035. This commitment encourages Kenya to consider adopting more incentives and measures to boost the uptake of electric vehicles within its own borders. However, for electric vehicles to be a truly green solution, the batteries powering them need to be sourced responsibly. Minerals like lithium, cobalt, nickel, graphite, and manganese are vital for these batteries, but they should come from environmentally sustainable sources. It is hoped that global standards and necessary certifications will be developed to ensure that this becomes a long-term reality. Thank you, CD, for that contribution. And that brings me to my second question to you which is, are there any policies and initiatives that the government has put in place to promote the adoption of electric vehicles? And maybe when you answer in that question, 
You can also look into the developments that have been made by the private sector to also encourage the uptake of electric vehicles. Well, Blender, the government recognizes the potential of e-mobility in promoting sustainable transportation and has taken sustainable and proactive steps to support its growth, even though the sector is still in its nascent stages. Although there is no specific sector policy aimed at encouraging investment in e-mobility, the government has put plans in place to foster its growth. For instance, on the 14th of September 2023, the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority released the Electric Vehicle Charging and Battery Swapping Infrastructure Guidelines 2023. Now, these guidelines, which are effective as of 1st of September 2023, provide an enabling framework that encourages the uptake of electric vehicles by addressing the challenge of charging infrastructure. The government of Kenya also intends to pursue the implementation of the Bus Rapid Transit Project and the Integrated Transport Planning Project in the country. These projects are intended to cut commuting time and cut pollution through the use of electric buses for public transport. It's also important to note that on the 4th of August 2023, the Cabinet Secretary for Transport and Roads gazetted a 15-member task force to develop a national e-mobility policy legislation and regulations. In addition to that, there is the National Climate Change Action Plan for the years 2018 to 2022. Now, this is a policy measure adopted by the government aimed at reducing greenhouse gas emissions and promoting sustainable development. In support of e-mobility financing, on the other hand, the Green Bond Program was initiated to support the issuance of Kenya's first green bond and the development of a domestic green bond market. While they are not widely known in the country, green bonds and green loans provide potential electric vehicle consumers and manufacturers with financing options to address challenges such as expanding charging infrastructure. Beyond government-led initiatives, there have also been significant developments in the commissioning of electric vehicles for public transport. Leading electric bus manufacturer, Basigo, along with local commuter service providers like City Hopper, Super Metro, and Ember Sava, collaborated to launch the electric public service vehicles between March 2022 and May 2023. Lastly, on the 19th of September 2023, Rome Electric introduced Kenya's first electric shuttle bus, the Rome Move, which is designed and assembled in the country and which is set to commence operations in late October 2023. There certainly seems to be a lot happening around the regulatory framework of the immobility sector in the country. So, the other segment will be getting insights from any of our tax ex- expert in this episode. So, any from a tax perspective, are there any incentives designed at promoting the growth of this city in the country? Absolutely, Blender. The government has introduced um, a range of tax incentives aimed at promoting the uptake of electric vehicles in Kenya. The first of these is on excise duty. We have in place a preferential excise duty rate of 10% for electric vehicles as compared to 35% for fossil fuel powered vehicles. A second incentive that was introduced in the Finance Act 2023 mm-hmm. is on value added tax. There is now a zero rating of supplies of electric vehicles, specifically electric motorcycles, bicycles, and buses. This is expected to boost sales of electric vehicles by giving sellers the benefit of VAT refunds on their purchases. Hand in hand with the zero rating of the supplies of the vehicles, the supplies of solar and lithium ion batteries was also zero rated. Thirdly, away from the tax incentives, a subsidy has been introduced for electric vehicle charging. The Kenya Power and Lighting Company has proposed a special tariff, which is subsidized at 17 shillings per kilowatt hour, which compared to the normal rate of 27 shillings per kilowatt hour for domestic consumption. As well, there has been an unintended consequence of the removal of a VAT subsidy on petroleum. Um, As we know, the Finance Act 2023 
raised the VAT on petroleum products from 8% to 16%. This, of course, has seen an increase in the prices of petroleum, which has been a boost for electric vehicle active. Finally, there have been other government proposals, including one to introduce a carbon tax. This is designed at reducing greenhouse gas emissions, promoting the polluter pays principle, and facilitating the transition to clean energy. This has gone hand in hand with the, a proposal to increase government spending on the immobility sector. Specifically, there has been a proposal to reallocate public expenditure towards uh, electric mass transit and to support the charging infrastructure in the country. That is quite interesting. And I gather that immobility is still in its nascent stages in this country. And what came to my mind is, are there any challenges from both the legal perspective and the tax perspective that might be facing this sector in the country? So Cindy, from a legal perspective, what are the challenges that are facing this sector? Before we go into the challenges, it's important to know that e-mobility is a promising solution for the transport sector in Kenya, which is plagued by high fuel costs and air pollution. However, Despite its numerous benefits, there are several notable challenges that must be addressed to achieve widespread adoption. One of them is the limited charging infrastructure. Kenya currently has less than 50 charging stations, with the majority being in urban areas. Some examples include the Kenyan offices in Nairobi, Two Rivers Mall, Garden City Mall, the Hub Karen, all in Nairobi, and the Kenya Ports Authority headquarters in Mombasa and Kisumu. This scarcity of charging stations restricts the range, accessibility, and convenience of electric vehicles, and it causes anxiety among drivers and potential consumers. Nevertheless, there are encouraging developments in this space, including the recent launch of charging stations by a commercial bank in Kenya. Uh, companies like Rome Electric and Basigo are also expanding their charging and battery swapping stations while more electric buses are being introduced on various routes. Additionally, the guidelines recently released by EPRA not only provide an enabling framework aimed at addressing this challenge of charging infrastructure, but they also aim at promoting affordable tariffs for electric vehicle owners and charging station operators. In addition to charging infrastructure challenges, there is a lack of sufficient knowledge and understanding on the advantages of electric vehicles. The technology of electric vehicles is relatively new and may appear complicated to most individuals when compared to the fossil fuel-powered vehicles that have been in use for a very long time. This complexity poses a marketing challenge for electric vehicle manufacturers when reaching out to potential consumers. The lack of public awareness may also impede the government's ability to create effective policies and initiatives to support the growth of electric mob mobility. Thank you for the insight, CD. Ellen, what are the challenges facing this sector from a tax perspective? Briefly, I'd like to discuss two challenges uh, facing the sector from an economic perspective. The first of this is the high import taxes that are applicable on uh, importing electric vehicles into the country. Both electric vehicles and fossil fuel powered vehicles are subject to 25% import duty on importation. However, given the higher cost of electric vehicles, the lack of a preferential import duty discourages Kenya's importers and uh, skews to in favor of importing fossil fuel powered vehicles. However, on a positive front, the government has expressed its support for a more tax friendly policy regime for immobility which in our view is a step in the right, in the right direction. Uh, the second challenge concerns the limited uh, domestic manufacturing and assembly capacity for electric vehicles. Especially in this climate of uh, a depreciating Kenya shilling, heavy reliance on costly imports discourages local purchasers and impacts the availability of spare parts and related technologies locally. Thank you both for highlighting the challenges facing this sector in the country. Now, we move on to the recommendations that both of you can suggest to help address the challenges that you just highlighted. Cindy, maybe you can start us off. To address the challenges, 
in the immobility sector and improve investment in immobility, we must focus on creating an enabling regulatory environment that can not only foster the growth of the sector, but encourage investment. The government should fully implement the policies and legislation that will be put forth by the e-mobility task force once these policies and legislation have been vetted. And this will ensure that they're seamlessly aligned with the guidelines provided by EPRA. This harmonization will establish a robust and transparent framework that forms the cornerstone of the sector's sustainable growth. It will also guarantee clarity and consistency in the regulatory environment, which will inspire confidence among sector uh, players and stakeholders. A harmonious regulatory environment minimizes uncertainty and streamlines the development of the sector, thus fostering an environment where both private enterprise and government can work together to drive the sector forward. Any what recommendations can you suggest? I would largely propose four recommendations that can be put in place from an economic perspective that can encourage um, the uptake of electric vehicles and address some of the challenges we have discussed. The first proposal that we have is an additional tax incentive in the form of reduced import duties on electric vehicles. This will encourage the importation of more electric vehicles and contribute towards greater uptake of electric vehicles. The other incentive is with respect to purchasers and users of electric vehicles. Uh, we propose um, a tax credit or tax rebate scheme to be introduced in support of purchasers, lessees, and users of electric vehicles. Additionally, the government can also consider putting in place a waiver or reduction of registration fees for electric vehicles, as well as a waiver or reduction of parking fees for electric vehicles. Thirdly, Incentives may be put in place in support of manufacturers, assemblers, and other industry players. In this regard, an incentive may be put in place to support local manufacture and assembly of electric vehicles through putting in place capital allowances for investments in these plants, as well as for investments in charging and battery swap infrastructure countrywide. Additionally, a preferential income tax rate may be introduced for businesses that provide charging and battery swap infrastructure in order to boost the uptake of electric vehicles in Kenya. Finally, the existing special operating framework agreement mechanism that is already in place may be better taken up to boost the sector. This mechanism exempts VAT and import taxes for certain approved projects. Um, in this regard, industry players may lobby the government and the government may support through approvals by the cabinet secretary for such ex exceptions to import taxes and VAT to be provided for the sector. What I've gathered from this conversation is that, yes, on one hand, immobility helps Kenya like reduce her carbon emissions and also need her nationally determined contributions. But on the other hand, this sector is really facing significant challenges, such as the charging infrastructure and also the, the complicated technology that comes along with electric vehicles. So a question that comes to my mind is, is immobility a realistic goal for Kenya? And if so, what opportunities does it offer? Maybe, Cindy, you can give your insights about that. All the indications point to a promising future for immobility in Kenya. The government's proactive support for immobility indicates that it is not only feasible, but it is also the likely future of mobility in the country. Immobility has the potential for creating new jobs and driving economic growth. As Kenya transitions to electric vehicles, it necessitates the development of new supply chains for charging infrastructure, battery technology, and electric motors. This does open doors for local entrepreneurs and manufacturers to actively participate in the growth of the e-mobility sector. In addition, Kenya's heavy reliance on imported fossil fuels puts a strain on its foreign currency reserves. Transitioning to electric vehicles therefore presents an opportunity for Kenya to reduce her dependence on fossil fuels. 
potentially benefiting the country economically. In summary, e-mobility presents a clear pathway for Kenya to enhance both her environmental sustainability and her economic growth prospects, making it a promising and realistic goal for the nation. From your contribution, it certainly seems to be a realistic goal for the country. So that marks the end of our conversation. But before we go, Cindy, what are your final remarks with respect to this whole issue of immobility in the country? Well, immobility is a rapidly growing sector in the country, which is not just a vision, but a tangible opportunity that, if harnessed effectively, can bring about transformative change in the transport sector, as well as lead to job creation, economic growth, and a path to environmental sustainability. While challenges exist, the determination and commitment demonstrated by all stakeholders, including the government, the private sector, and the public, provide a strong foundation for overcoming these obstacles. The journey ahead therefore holds great promise. And with continued collaboration and innovation, Kenya can realize the full potential of e-mobility in the future. We certainly are eager to see what the future holds for us. Amy, uh, please give us your final remarks. As we wrap up, it is clear that Kenya is in the midst of some exciting transformations in the transport sector. In my view, we can accelerate the growth of the e-mobility sector in four main ways. Firstly, um, by establishing and implementing an effective legal and regulatory framework for the sector. Secondly, uh, there is need to put in place additional fiscal and tax incentives that we've discussed throughout this podcast to boost growth in the sector. Thirdly, there is need to also expand the charging infrastructure countrywide, as well as the battery swapping into infrastructure to support electric vehicles. Finally, there is need to encourage increased investment, especially from the private sector within the industry. With these measures in place, I believe that although the road may have challenges, the destination is very much worth the journey. Thank you. And I also concur with your conclusion that the destination is worth the journey. Thank you, Cindy and Ellie, for your invaluable insights and contributions to our discussion on this topic. Your time and expertise are truly valued. And to our dear listeners, thank you for joining us in this episode. We hope this conversation has provided you with a deeper understanding of immobility, from its definition and advantages to the strategic measures taken by the government as well as the private sector to encourage its adoption. We have also shed lives on the exciting developments and challenges in this landscape, as well as suggested recommendations that might help address the challenges. If you found this conversation enlightening, we invite you to stay connected by subscribing to our podcast. Your feedback is valuable to us, so please feel free to share your thoughts or questions or experiences through our social media channels. As we prepare for our next episode, remember to stay safe, stay curious, and continue exploring the world of knowledge. From Orara and Company Advocates, thank you and goodbye.